Okay, so how does the, a team that's as young as you guys beat a team that's as veteran as Oklahoma State? I mean, just going by the, at least the grades. Yeah, is. yeah, no, it's, it's a great point. And I think, uh, you know, we've struggled through that the last couple of weeks is, is playing more veteran teams. And um, it pushes us to mature at a faster rate. Uh, it pushes us to do the little things, the details, um, the small, mundane, simple stuff really, really well. You know, I, I feel like that's what you get used to doing the longer that you've played. You, you know it's, man, the details of your split, the details of your alignment, um, man, making a, a play here, throwing an accurate ball here, knowing where my pass set is at here. And, and I think, obviously, you don't know when those plays are going to show up throughout a game that might make the difference. Um, but we have to be more ready in that moment. And again, when you play a veteran team, you know, the, most teams that, that have experience like that, they know it's going to come down to six plays. And I think we've got to really feel that and realize that and, and, you know, understand that urgency with each play and each opportunity we get. What's your evaluation of where you guys are as a whole after Saturday? Yeah, you know, we didn't perform the way that we were capable of Saturday. And, and that's in several areas, several positions. Uh, we didn't perform up to the standard of, of where we can be. And I think we all, again, walking off the field, I don't think there was one person or one position group that felt like, man, you know what, I'm satisfied with what went on. Um, we, we've got to improve the ability to sustain drives, and we've got to be able to do that in multiple ways, do that in the run game, create a run game, and put pressure on people um, to go and tackle our running backs, to, to give those guys space to go uh, make plays, to uh, be consistent in the pass game and be able to pick up chunk plays, um, but obviously be able to move the ball um, with efficient passing as, as we go. And again, in our, in our best moments, even the last uh, few weeks, our best moments, you see that sustained throughout a drive. Um, you know, in the moments that that, that doesn't show up, um, yeah, you, you see us get a negative yardage play, not be able to recover, um, and not be able to make a play on third down. And, and we've got to, uh, yeah, that, that's where we got to put our time and effort into improving is, is having that sustained uh, ability to do that throughout the course of a game. When you look at it, do you feel like you need to be better at what you guys are trying to do or change what you're trying to do in ways big or small? That's a great, that's a great way to put it. Uh, I think there's a little bit of both. You know, I, I, I feel like as, after watching the film, you know, there, there wasn't a lot that we felt like schematically um, we saw that was different than what we expected. Our execution wasn't where it needed to be on the stuff that we were doing. And at the same time, you are getting a feel um, of who we are uh, who our playmakers are, who are the guys that we feel like can step up and make plays in the moment. So I do think that there's a little bit of that element, too, that you're learning more about the team, learning more about what they do well, how they operate, when they are at their best. And, and so um, I think that there's been moments of, of exactly what you're saying that you feel like, OK, man, we might have thought that that was more of who we were and, and what was best for us. Um, but obviously, that, that transition and changes uh, as the year goes on. And I feel like even three weeks in, um, you know, with, with a lot of guys that you are, you, you're, you're figuring out who they are on Saturdays. Uh, we, we've sh for sure got a better feel now. With averaging, I think, 1.7 yards a carry, the offensive line obviously was letting a lot of penetration in. Do you have to reevaluate everything you're doing in the run game or what? Just give us your thoughts on where you feel like that. For sure. You know, I, th I think that was our starting point even on Sunday is, is evaluating what we're doing, evaluating who we're doing it with, um, evaluating how we're doing that in the week uh, to be able to build confidence that they can go out there um, and, and, and move the ball and move people and create uh, seams and creases for our running backs to go and make plays because that's, that's something that we've got to have. The way, the, the way that we believe as an offense that we can be successful and we can be successful in this conference, it is establishing a run game. And again, figuring out different ways to do that is going to be important week to week. Figuring out you know, who our team is and, and how they do that best is going to be important. Um, but we've got to be able to do that at the end of the day. How much can you change offensively? you know, a quarter of the way in the season and how much do you want to change offensively with a young team that's already learned what it's learned? Yeah, that's, that's you know, I think it's a similar question to what Travis said. It's, it's a little bit of both, you know. Um, you, you feel like, and again, watching the film, you feel like there's a lot of missed opportunities and a lot of opportunities for us to be better at what we're doing. Um, and again, 
as well as figuring out how our players play, what they do best, and how we can um, utilize them and continue to develop and grow. You know, that, that's a big part, I think, for us each week is, you know, and Coach has hit on it, um, but the development of our, our team and our uh, personnel each week is going to be critical for our success um, week in and week out and where we're at right now versus where we're at in two weeks, three weeks, four weeks from now. And so that's something that, that I think we're all taking time and focusing on, um, you know, positionally across the board. Offensively, in the last two games, you've had more success throwing the ball in the fourth quarter. Can you explain why Rocco's maybe settled in a little bit more in the fourth quarter and what you can do in the first three? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, it's been really cool to see him um, in moments where there is more on his plate. And, um, you know, we, we're, we're asking him to go make plays uh, for him to do that consistently. And, um, you know, like, like you said, seeing that in that fourth quarter in the moment where we needed it, uh, that's important to see as a competitor, as a player, and obviously as a quarterback. Um, you know, and, and I think where those other areas come is, is we got to continue to put ourselves in good positions where, um, you know, we're not one dimensional at any point that, that we feel like we can move the ball passing, we can move the ball running, um, and, and really feel like he can go and put pressure on, on people versus feeling like, man, I'm behind the chains and now I feel like the pressure is on me. Seems like Jaden Higgins has been kind of a bright spot uh, for you guys. Just how would you assess how he got to this point and, and what he's done to put himself in this position? Yeah, you know, I talked to him yesterday and I said the same thing, man. I, I, I'm really encouraged about how he's played and, and what he's done in these first few weeks. Um, he's put a lot of time and effort. He was a guy that I feel like every time you're walking through the indoor, that guy was in there catching balls, uh, working on his craft, um, figuring out ways that he could get better. So you felt like those things were coming for him. Um, and I think you still see the hunger for him to go and be better and do more and make more plays for us. And so that, I think that's the thing that you're excited about with him is you do feel like he's got a really, really high ceiling um, and he's already made a ton of plays, uh, but, but we still feel like he's just scratching the surface of who he can end up being. When people see you guys move the ball down the field with the pass in that fourth quarter and get the touchdown, they look at it and say, well, why don't they just do that the whole game long? Can you explain why it is or isn't that simple? Yeah, you know, I think, um, there, there's there's a couple factors as, as it goes in, and I think it's it's us feeling like even going into the game, um, you know, our, our run game and what we're doing there and, and getting playmakers the ball. We, we feel good about our playmakers in the running back room, and we want to get those guys the ball and get those guys moving. Um, you know, again, becoming one-dimensional at any point in time uh, for us or for most teams, you know, that that's going to be challenging. It's going to be challenging for – uh, the offensive line for the quarterback, uh, for the team in general, uh, if you become one dimensional. So um, now at, at the end of the day, we had to adjust. We had to, you know, make things happen in a different way than, than maybe what we intended going in. And it was cool to see our players go and operate in that way. Uh, but again, at the same time, we, we, we do feel like we have to be multidimensional on offense. And obviously that, where that has room to improve, especially is the run game. Coach, I know it's a small clip to start the season, and the defenses you faced have kind of played into it. But at least in the um, small chances that Rocco has aired the ball out a lot, do you does that give you confidence in him being able to do that more often as Big 12 play goes on? For sure. You know, I, I, again, I've been really encouraged with that, and to see him have success, to see our uh, you know, the, the way that our offensive line has pass protected, the way that our receivers and tight ends have made plays, uh, that is an encouragement. I think you take those things and you you figure out where you can utilize those better and, and do those more. And so, um, yeah, seeing those guys operate well and move the ball downfield in moments where we needed them to, uh, that that is encouraging as an offense and, and something we for sure can build on. The offensive line is only allowed, I think, one sack in pass pro this year, but they haven't had as much success in run blocking situations. Can you explain what can be done to improve that heading into the future? Yeah, I think it's the same things we're talking about. You know, we, we've we've got to, and again, there's there's plenty of opportunity for um, us to create seams in the run game. We've got to do a better job of of moving people off the ball and creating those things again. Um, there is, I, I think, those guys improving on what they're doing from a technical standpoint, improving the big picture awareness and, and understanding of what we're trying to do is, is going to help. And again, you, yeah, you see them, um, you see them making strides and making improvements uh, in, in several different areas. But that coming together and those five guys being um, just just one unit that feels like you know what they're going to get out there and find a way. Um, you know, to, to create creases for our running backs. Uh, at, at the end of the day, that's a little bit of what it comes down to. And, and that's what they're straining after um, to make happen this Saturday.